Hi everyone, and welcome back to my next Graphic 45 brand ambassador project. For this month in the Facebook group, the challenge is to create some home decor. So I've decided to go with some Christmas decorations and I'm gonna show you how I've made this bauble. It can be hung on a tree, but can also be opened up and you can fill it up with some treats, which I'll show you later in the video. I've decided to use the new Mary and Bright papers and I've gone for the 8x8 collection because the images are scaled down so we get a bit more detail in these one inch squares. But of course you could use your 12x12 12 12 as well. So to make this, I've got a little template here ready. I'm going to need a 10 and a half by six and a quarter piece of cardstock. Now, because we are only using those one inch squares, I can get enough to make three of these baubles from one of my eight by eight papers. If I'm very frugal and measure prop everything properly, I can actually get four. I just can't decorate the top if, if, um, if you want to make four. You can just decorate the whole sides. But I'll get to that later on. So, ten and a half. By six and a quarter. And then I'm going to grab my scoreboard. So the idea with this is you need eight squares going across and five squares going down and then just a little tab on the side to make it um, attached to each other as, as you bring it around. So I've tried to make my squares as big as I can, but you also needed a size which you could work out. So if it's a one inch square, a half inch, you needed a way of working out. So I didn't want to go into 16. So this was as big as I could go using my A4 cardstock. So I've got my sheet here. So I'm going to score every inch and a quarter. So I'm going to go at one and a quarter. Yeah, one and a quarter. Two and a half, three and three quarters, five, six and a quarter, seven and a half, eight and three quarters, and ten inches. So that's given me my eight squares across. Now I'm going to turn it around. And I'm going to do these measurements now. So again, we're making uh, squares, so it's exactly the same ones. One and a quarter, two and a half, three and three quarters, and five. So the next one would be six and a quarter, which is the size of our papers. So you can see now we've got our eight squares going across, five down, and this little, little half inch on the side. So now we need to score down the middle of every other square until we get to this first score line. So it's a five eighths, so there's half. So I'm just gonna go, uh, so it's half, so a forward one. And I'm just coming down and making sure I meet that horizontal score line. So I leave this square full and I move on to the next one, three and one eighth. So from the three inches, I just go across one more. Then at five and five eighths. So there's five and a half. So there's five and five eighths. And eight and one eighth, which is just one across. So now I'm going to repeat that on these bottom ones. So I'm going to flip it this way. Don't flip it that way because you've got this extra half inch, which will make all the measurements wrong. You'd have to have all, all new measurements. So five eighths down to that score line again. Three and one eighth, five and five eighths, and eight and one eighth. So again, remember that half inch tab is off to the right this time. Now, these score lines do do the curve up and they're all valued down. It doesn't matter because they're going to be cut off soon. So don't worry that the score lines look different. So I'm going to get rid of my scoreboard. I'm just going to bring in 
my little cutting mat so that I can have a bit of a softer edge, a uh, softer surface to squeeze in. Because I'm going to use my ruler and score tool now. And every time I've come down this half inch, I'm now going to go from that point and do a triangle inside the next square. So I find easier just to go across. So find the channel. So my board point, uh, board tool will just drop in and draw out. And do all these ones in one go. And then just turn it and come back. along the others. So we've done these triangles here. So what I'm going to do now is flip it around and we're going to do the same on the other side. So every time it's come down at half an inch, I'm going to find where it meets the channel and score. This keeps catching on my, because I've got a small board here today. I would have used my Graphic 45 mat, but it's black on black, so you probably wouldn't have seen much today. And now I'm going to come backwards. And complete those triangles. the last one okay so what you find hopefully you can see we've got these triangles now every place where we had those half inch marks just turn it back the correct way so now each each of these squares with those half away points scored i'm actually going to cut away so this first one, I can just cut out and then keep that square hole. We're going to cut down and then cut across. So if it's got that halfway point scored, you want to get rid of it. There we go. And the last one for this side. So I'll just cut down both sides, down the score line, and then cut it out. I'm going to repeat the same then on the bottom. nearly cut off the wrong one. Actually, it wouldn't matter much because I've got to cut down every single one of these, don't I? Actually, that might save me a bit of time if I cut down all the lines first. Here we go. And then cut out. Each of these. There we go. So I'm going to grab my bone folder and we're going to fold back all of these and just give them a gentle burnish. You don't uh, press hard today, just gentle burnishes will do. There we go. And again then down each one of these. As you can see this is what makes that round curve. Okay. 
And you also need to do those two horizontals down the middle. Okay. So you can see how it all curves around that way and it will all curve around that way as well. So it will attach using these tabs. Let's bring them this way so it's the same. So I'm going to attach some double-sided tape before I do any cutting down these three center pieces. I'm going to cut off those two tabs at the top and bottom. We don't need them at all. I'm just going to cut that off. There we go. And I'm going to now cut from this outer edge towards that score line. So I'm creating a triangle here. And then just trimming off just a slight little angle there. So again, a slight little angle here. So we're creating a tab here which will stick onto that one. But you'll see later, we'll have these triangular pieces to stick onto later. So we don't want a whole rectangle there because it's going to attach onto this little triangle here. So that's why we need to cut it away now. So now you've got a mountain and a mountain here fold, which means they're going up and over, which means these ones now will be our valleys. So I'm folding them downwards. So I'm just using my nail to fold down. So valley and a valley. So what we're creating is this V is sort of going down into itself like that. And the same here. And again, we're just gonna fold it over. So we're creating a valley. And here, I'm going to do it again. And so it's just bringing this corner up towards me creates a valley rather than having to squash in. There we go. Valley, 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 and valley. Okay. So that's the whole base prepped. The only thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to be making mine into a bauble. So I'm going to have a hanger. So I'm going to just do a little mark in the middle from left to right. Uh, sorry, from opposing corners and here. And I found my centre. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my hole punch. So this is one of these handheld ones. And what I've done is, it's got a little thing here to stop all your punch outs falling out. I've taken it off. And the reason being, I can now see where my hole is going. So I can see my cross in the middle. There we go. And I know now I've got a hole in the center. If I'd kept that over, I, I'd be guessing and trying to look from the side. So I rip it off. I've actually done that on all my hole punch. So I've got a large one here. See, I've just taken it off. Just take some pliers, just rip it off. Right, now, as I fold it, I'm going to bring those in. That is where I would want... It to stay so that is where I want my hole so again now I'm going to bring it back and I can see where it is and I can punch it so now with some luck those two holes are perfectly aligned so I'm going to bring the third one in so I'm pressing those triangles in so you can see that indentation is happening naturally that's where I'd want it so I'm going to put a circle And hole, and then the last one, bring it in, line it up nicely. Oh, make sure the one on the hole is on top, 
unlock it. There we go. So now we've got our four holes punched into the top as well. It's time now to start assembling. So I'm going to start off with just taking off the tape in the middle. I am going to add just a touch of glue just to strengthen it a little bit, just a tiny bit. And I'm going to bring it and just close it up. So line up those score lines going across. And I've got it. So now I can fold the black ones to reveal this tape. Add some glue. Just a tiny bit, you don't want it squishing out. And attach. And the same on the other side. Pinch it just so it grabs. There we go. So now we've got our holes at the top. We've got these full ones at the bottom, which we'll glue together later. And we're just going to sort of train it. So we're going to take all those triangles and push them in, and you'll get your bobble shape. In fact, let's do it now. Let's open up these four. These are the bottom ones. I'm going to put some of the tape. onto this one. What I'm going to do then, it'll attach to the one directly opposite. There we go. So I'm going to bring it forward and those two, because they're squares, will fit on top of each other nicely. Then get some more tape. So I'm bring one this time, I'm going to squeeze this in to get that shape and just maneuver it into position and you're starting to get that shape straight away and the last one I'm just going to stick down onto that a bit too long there we go and attach some glue and squeeze those in and place it on top. And you can see that wonderful shape appear there. And then the top one, I'm gonna leave as it is because my closure, which I'll show you later, will come through here. If you're going to make a tree holder version without the hole, what you would do is put a magnet here and here. In fact, I have put a magnet, you can see here and here, to keep this one closed and in position. It just gives it a bit of extra um, way of keeping it in place. Now, as you can see, there's plenty of room in there for some lovely treats. Actually, if you cut off the top, you've got quite a nice cool cauldron shape. But let's so forget about that for now and keep them all closed. Right, so what we're gonna do now is decorate it. So I did have a little practice run and I used the Letters to Santa papers from last year. And with this, I cut my papers at one inch. And this is the sort of effect you have. You get a lot of the background color showing, which was okay, but I wanted a fuller effect. So this time, I've still gone for one inch paper but I've gone for one and one eighth um, gold cardstock. So you could just cut your papers at one and one eighth. You wouldn't get as many out of one sheet, but you'd still get enough to make plenty of these from one eight by eight sheet or 
12 by 12 sheet, you'd get loads. So my papers are one inch by one inch, and my gold is one and a quarter by one. Oh, sorry, not one and a quarter, one and an eighth. And what I'm going to do is just use some black soot distress ink just to get rid of the white core. Now, I didn't do it on the gold on my practice run. And you can see the gold, uh, the white edge is showing there, which I didn't realise till afterwards. So this time, I'm even going to ink the gold as well. So let's have a look. Here's one without the inking, and here's one with the black. Let's see if you can see the difference there. So you can see that white edge here shows up. So it's worth doing, worth inking your uh, pieces to match your background paper. And then it's just a case of gluing them down. So I've done some ready for us. So all these are just one eighth by one eighth squares. So one and one eighth, so not one eighth, that would be tiny. I think you know what I meant though. There we go. So whilst that one's drying, I'll attach the rest. So every place I see a full square, that's all I'm going to do now, is attach one of my decorative squares. I'm just centralising it like that. And let's go around the middle first. So I'm making sure my glue goes right up to the edge of the square. And I'm looking to see where my berries are hanging downwards. But I think this paper has them going in every direction anyway. So much easier when you've picked a non-directional paper. And a couple more. I think we've got a couple, two more, and we'll be around the middle. There we go. And then I'm also going to put some, so that's, we've used eight. We need four for the top. Birds are out today. He wants to be in the video. Okay. So we've used eight around the middle, eight along the top. So up to 12. And then we've got another four, so 16 in total, which is a good number because when you cut your eight by inch strips, you get eight out of every strip. So you can make four of these baubles if you only do these bits. So I'm just gonna do the bottom, I don't think you can see that well. So I'm doing the four bottom ones. So if you don't do the top, you can get four of these out of one eight by eight sheet. But I do think the one on top does sort of finish it off. I'm sure, did I do it on the practice? Yeah, I didn't do it on the practice run, but I did it on the um, true prototype one. And I think it does 
just add that little extra special finishing touch. Yeah. There we go. Eight. Uh, four done. So it's all covered except for the base because you're not going to see that. So I'm going to attach one more, that one we did earlier. So if you can do this step, you will only get three out of your eight bait. I say only three. That's still pretty good going. So I'm going to glue this one down and turn it over. Look for that white. So you can see why I take that off. I can get it right on. And then that is your finished bauble. So if you're going to do a tree toll division, just add a magnet um, onto the two opposing ones. And you may need some underneath as well. So just magnetize that shut. Or as I'm going to do here, we're going to make a closure with some string. So to help, what I've done is I've got some dies which cut circles with a little circle in the middle. Or you can just do a circle and punch your own in the middle. And I'm going to put some tape here and here. Because you'd have to do quite a big knot to fit through there. And my cord is quite thin, so this is a great way around it. So I'm going to just fold over my thread and push it through that hole. And now I can see how long I want it. That's about right. So I can stick it down and stick it down underneath. And I can just trim it off or just fold this little tiny bit back. And now I'm going to attach some more tape on top. So it's made a nice sandwich. Take it off. And then just to help the edges stick, I'm going to take my glue around the edges. I'm going to take a second circle and just sandwich it in the middle. So that neatens it up, but also just sort of clamps it down and holds it all in position. So what I've got now is a little closure, or not closure, a hanger, which is not going to be attached to this, but you could, you could glue it to one of the ones which, right, these two will go together there to bring those sides. These two are going to come here. So you don't want to put it on there. You want to glue it to one of the side ones. So one of the squares next to the one you decorated. Now you can see, it'll just hold there. So let's open it up. So hold that in and do the one opposite. Because the treats you put inside are going to be dependent on where you're putting this. So if you're going to be putting on the tree, you don't want to put anything heavy in. And the last one. There we go. And you just pull it up and it all closes like so. Let's just open that up. Now, if you find it's flapping up, what I did on my original was I took a little magnet and some black tape. And just attach the magnet there and I'll do the same. If I put my magnets, here we go. And pull that up. Oh, let me put some tape underneath the magnet.
and press it down and then the black tape so just so will hide it hopefully these are very strong magnets try and get it there we go and fold it over so now when i fold close it that magnet will hold it all in place so there we go that is my home decor assignment my home decor project and you can see the difference with the inking and the non-inking so it is worth doing that step and yeah a nice simple quite economical as well which you would expect from me and a lovely little finishing uh, finished project and of course if you wanted to decorate with some extra ribbon around the center you know you can go to town but i think they just look quite classy as they are so I cannot wait to see your version. So remember to share some projects and tag me if you do share them in the Facebook group. I'd love to see your versions and I'd love to hear what you think of them. So please leave a comment in the section below. So thank you very much and I'll see you all again soon.